we all know that God famously called David a man after his own heart, knowing full well every failure and mistake he would commit over the next 60 years. And it was in that moment that God set a precedent. He wasn't seeking perfect men or women to follow him, but rather his primary goal was simply that they would be after his own heart. Or in other words, that they would abide in his love and love him in return. This is the RiskCast Podcast. Hey, welcome to another episode of the RiskCast Podcast, where we talk about creativity, the Bible, and worship leading, and then a variety of other things just to keep things interesting. Before we get to the uh, content for today, which I'm going to be talking about the life of David briefly, uh, I want to give a couple updates on some things I have coming up here on uh, September 3rd, I believe it is. Yeah, September 3rd. I'm going to be releasing a uh, a new song. It's an acoustic version of a song that I wrote with a really good friend of mine named Lisa Gottschall. And then another good friend of mine, my brother, uh, John, probably over, goodness, probably over 10 years ago. Uh, it's called More Than Anything. So that'll be coming out September 3rd on you know everywhere you stream music. We also have a video that we'll be releasing on YouTube uh, that you guys can check out. And then another super exciting thing. Actually, it starts tomorrow. Rehearsals start tomorrow for my From Patmos musical. So if you haven't been tracking with me, if this is your first time listening, I'm a worship leader, songwriter, composer, and recording artist based in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, For the last 20 years, I've led a ton of worship. And then about 11 years ago, I really got this um, bug is the wrong word. This passion, I don't know, that's also the wrong word, but this desire, whatever, the words are failing me right now on a podcast as I'm recording it, um, to to uh, do film and musicals and composition and all that sort of thing was not my dream, was not my desire. It kind of took a while for the Lord to, to win me over on it. But since that time in 2009, April 2009, I've written and produced three full-length musicals. And so tomorrow... Uh, We begin rehearsals for the first musical I ever wrote. We're redoing it this October, and we're going to be filming it. Uh, Now, if you're listening to this and you you love musicals, you're thinking, oh, I want to come, you know, I want to get a ticket. Uh, it's probably not going to happen because it's it's pretty much sold out. We're focusing on filming it this fall, um, so there's a very very limited amount of number of tickets. But because we're filming it, we'll also be releasing it for. Um, Anyone who wants to to stream it, more information can come on that soon. But wanted to give a couple updates there on some things that are coming out here over the next couple of weeks. And definitely, you know, if you think about it, uh, send up some prayers for us, myself, my co-producer, my co-writer, Alice, the entire cast and crew that we have assembled. You know, August was a um, a nerve wracking month, but you know, it's just every time we have you know auditions and then callbacks for a show. Um, you know, you never know who's going to show up if, if anyone's going to show up and if you're going to have the cast of characters to, to put on this show that you wrote. And it's, it's just been incredible to watch who's walked through the door for auditions and for callbacks. And so tomorrow is the first time that we're all going to convene together and, uh, could not be more excited about that. So what I want you to do right now is to picture a hardened criminal on death row. A man or a woman tried and proven to have murdered another person in cold blood. King David. The Jewish king that God honored countless times throughout history was no better than that convict. King David was literally a murderer, but yet God still called him a man after his own heart. 1 Samuel 13 verse 14. That may chafe your religious sensitivities a little bit. I know it does mine, but that's not necessarily a bad thing, you know, and I've definitely learned that through my years of walking with the Lord. When things offend my mind, many times the Lord is uh, working under the surface and he's on a mission to reveal what's actually in my heart. And God famously called David a man after his own heart, knowing full well every failure and mistake that he was going to make. Uh, throughout his entire life. And it was in that moment that that God began to set a precedent that he wasn't seeking perfection, 
from men and women, the Israelites who he gave the law to in the wilderness that, you know, was, was impossible for them to follow. He now comes along and he says, I gave you the law to show you in your heart that you cannot follow it. But what I'm actually after is your heart. I desire your heart more than your sacrifice. And we like to picture King David as a, you know, a heartfelt worship leader, an artist, and a lover. And he was certainly all those things, absolutely. But he was far from perfect. He was also a liar and adulterer and a murderer. And he knew it. And I want to focus in on that point. David was a smart dude. He knew it. But for all his other faults, David was refreshingly self-aware and quick to turn back to God with his whole heart. David carried this uh, this certainty on the inside that John the Beloved would carry almost you know a thousand years later in the New Testament, this uh, unshakable conviction that he was actually the one that God loved. Period. Plain and simple. That, that was it. And David possessed this ability to come back and just say, I messed up. I repent sackcloth and ashes, but he had this understanding that God was passionately in love with him. And this statement transformed every sphere of David's life, and it can do the same for me and the same for you. So again, I want you to imagine something. When you think about yourself, picture the most successful version of you. What do you see? Maybe a man or woman who can recite an entire book of the Bible. Maybe your bank account is huge and you give all of your money to the poor. Uh, You're a husband or you're a wife that's so godly and putting the needs of your spouse above yours uh, that you just, you know, seem so righteous and so holy that your, uh, your small group just pales in comparison to your spirituality and your prayer life and, and all these sorts of things. And again, don't mean, don't get me wrong. Uh, these are admirable things to strive for, absolutely, as as lovers of Jesus. But my point is that success, your success, is not tied up in any of these things that you can do. The Lord makes it clear that He is looking on the inside. He is looking at our hearts. In Matthew chapter 7, He says that there will be some that will say, hey, we did these awesome things. Did you not see how awesome I was on the platform doing amazing signs and wonders for you in your name? And he'll say, that's awesome, but I actually never knew you. And that's what David possessed in his heart as a man after God's own heart. He said, I'm doing stuff, whether it's being a, a shepherd, you know, in the wilderness, uh, being a king or being a fugitive on the run from a demonized king trying to kill him. In all these different situations and scenarios, David had this awareness that the Lord was after his heart. He was aware that the Lord had this deep love for him. And it was in that that he found his success. So as we meditate on God's word and and his love, we experience slowly over time that same reality that David did. The more that you sit underneath God's word and not just, you know, looking at, at God's word for, you know, what he can give to you or even what he can speak to you for that day, but just sitting to receive his love. When's, when's the last time you just sat? to receive love from God. You know, I had a friend of mine who told me one time, he said he wakes up every morning and he he started praying this prayer because he was so nervous of what God was going to say that he needed to know the answer, but now he does it because he actually wants to know. And a trust has been built between him and the Lord. And he wakes up in the morning and he says, God, what do you think about me? I, I really want to know, what do you think about me? These thoughts that are towards me that are more than the sands of the sea, what do you think about me? And I want to invite you and encourage you to begin that journey with the Lord. Or if you've maybe gotten off track from it, whatever it is, to, to, to begin asking him that again. 
You know, it's so easy in this day and age that we live where uh, it's a it's a visual generation. We're watching videos and seeing, you know, dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of pictures and memes every single day that it's so easy to to slip up and to think my relationship with God is based on what I do. My relationship with my my friends or my family or whatever is based on what I do. And again, there are biblical things. It's called obedience. It's called abiding in the vine and and uh, seeking to live righteous because the Lord said, this is the one who loves me, the one who keeps my commandments. But along with that is this awareness that my success metric is based upon my sincere desire, just like David, to love God and to receive his love in return. So I pray that we would all live underneath the glorious freedom that God's love for us is extravagant and he suffers long with us in the midst of our weakness. 